Good morning, folks. I got Johnny and Ivan this morning. The girls have went out. I'm not calling them. These two were at the gate. Johnny is getting pretty smart about watching what this guy does. I got a box here. I want to open first. I know what it is. Uh, wait. Uh-uh. Johnny, y'all got to back up. You and I are both. Here's a box. Good. Let me get this started. Wait. Hey. Hey. Please. Bang. You do it again. I am tired of trying to do it myself. You ready? You ready? I've got a donkey face and a goat face in my face. I had, I had little Carter all morning babysitting. Um, she and Kim went to get groceries. Bree had a, a doctor's appointment, and uh, she says, "Can I keep her?" Well, oh, heck yeah, heck yeah. Papa over there to keep the kids. Little thing comes over here on the trampoline. I said, "Let me go. I'm cooking some beans." I said, "Let me go check my beans." I, I was gone 30 seconds. I come back out and she's disappeared. I call her. I call her. She's sitting out here on my mule, waiting to go for a ride. <laughs> anyway, we don't have a whole lot to, to do right here this morning. Only a few things have come in, and that's fine. I'm, I'm not complaining. Uh, I'm going to give these guys, and we'll go through what we've got here. And then uh, I'm going to stop this video. And in a little while, I'm going to go down to my chair. You know where I like to sit with my babies. And, and I want to talk about some comments I got. Good comments. From the video I made about the... Uh, the bulls being unpredictable. I got so many comments about people's experiences. And I want to just try to share some of those. I might not be able to share them all. Those, their experiences with all of us. Uh, it just kind of backed up what I'm saying about bulls. You know, even though Billy is just a sweetheart. And, and so is Moses. You still got to be somewhat on your guard around even those two uh, because it can get a little bit out of hand. But they can get, they can be upset about something that you may not even realize. Let me see there's a note box. There's eight boxes of vanilla wafers here. I don't see. Sometimes boxes come and there's no notes. There's no notes in this one. No notes in this box. There's eight boxes of the yellow white. Here, Johnny. Oh, Johnny to have his share. Uh, so I'm not going to take a lot of time with that. I want to, I got this back. It's the diploma Kim and Tom sent about Ivan's, uh, you know, his, uh, reading abilities. It says uh, third grade distance learning diploma. I showed you before, but I now I've got it laminated so it can go in his little man cave. Congratulations to Ivan Morrow on a job well done this year. 8, 19, and 22, and then Kim and Tone, the teacher. <laughs> that's that's going to go in his man cave on the wall that he can show. He can show him go. Yes. Get the tea jug. I made the tea last night. I put it in the wrong jug. <laughs> That's the jug that makes punchy, I guess. Oh, uh, anyway. Uh, when he moves back out there, when it gets a little bit cooler weather, it's a little bit warm in that little room at night, or even in the daytime sometimes during the summer. It's, it's, it's very nice and shady. And it's, in the winter, it's warm. 
Even though it's got shakes. All right, this says here, Jack, come on, son. This says to Pop OG. Hang on. It's a gift. Serenity Garden from, okay. She told me she sent a gift not to use her name, and I won't. I almost did. Thank you so much, Freddy. Uh, see what we got here. Let's see what we got. John, you're right in the way, son. Nobody can see. Johnny, please, son. Hey, man. Really, I'm, I'm serious, people. Hang on. This is all we're going to do. This is it. I'm serious. This is going to be it. Last box I'm going to do. You need just two, two people. I got it. I had to reach down way down. I have not knocked out of my hands. Okay. Abby. Johnny. Oh, wow. It's a... Uh, Boop on a motorcycle. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. So she'll love this, and she will hang it out there. I guarantee you, she loves Betty Boop. All right, got one more, and this says also Papa and Gigi. It doesn't say Ivan. Doesn't say Johnny. So that's all we're gonna do, Papa. I'm just gonna go ahead and move move over here. As long as he don't leave his yard. Okay, this is also Hey on, Stupid. Hang on. All right. More of this stuff <laughs> for the garden to keep Gigi and Kim busy. Uh, they need to be busy. Them two out shopping this morning for groceries. Uh, they did because I had done both. I had done both. And uh, again, she doesn't want me to say her name, so I'm not going to say it. Let's open it up. Oh, wow. Well. These are going to be beautiful. These. There's a plug right there on the back porch. Or she may put them in the house. I don't know where she might want to put these. Uh, LED lights, they're beautiful. And they, they plug in, so there's a plug right there on the porch if she wants to put them on the porch. Knowing Gigi, I, it may be hanging over my bed so she can make sure I don't Get up and watch TV or something in the middle of the night. <laughs> Thanks so much, sweetie. She will love these. Yeah, that that is actually what we have this morning. So I want to go here shortly. So I'll take these things into her. I want to go shortly down to my chair back there and go through some of those comments 
because I was so interested in, it's interested in those. Uh, I love, in some, some videos, maybe there's no opportunity to share your, your experiences, but some of them, you know, like that bull one, it, it brought back memories from people that hadn't been on the farm maybe in many, many years. All of a sudden, that, that kind of rekindled the thought they had, our memory they had, and their stories are so, they're amazing. And it just kind of reaffirmed what I've always known about bulls. Bulls are unpredictable. And a bull is big ones, you know, 2,000 pounds or so, or some bigger than that, gets angry. It don't matter who's in front of him or what's in front of him. He's angry. And, and he's going to move the world if he can. And you don't want to be in front of him. So, I got cookie dust all over me. Heidi, get some, Heidi says, good. I was over there, and Johnny's underneath eating cookies, and she's going to eat cookies with Johnny. So, we're going to go down just shortly, and I'm going to finish this video off with some of those comments, because I, I, I've been wanting to make a video, maybe one a week, with comments from just different from different videos I make. Because I get so much, a lot of, you know, people coming back and telling me things about how something similar happened to them. And I like I like these stories, and I want to, you know, share them with you. And I may not be able to get them all, because sometimes a lot of them, but I will go through them once, maybe once a week. We'll have a video day or a comment day. And, uh, yeah, I say, I look at you here, here, baby. You could come on this other side and get them. You can. Here, Johnny. You know these these two guys here. I, come on, son, over here. These two guys are a lot more peaceful than the other. Maybe. Maybe it's because they're girls. Girls are kind of high strung and crazy. Some of them are crazy. <laughs> what will you do without them? What would those boys do without them? All right, I'm going to cut this off. We're going to go back to the back here and take Ivan with me. Johnny said, Johnny had to ride. We'll catch you back there and finish this up. I got the cookies. I got them. I'll take them with us. Okay. Problem is, all that other bunch of crazies are going to be out there, too. We'll see how it goes. Hey, guys. Johnny, come with me. Johnny came with me. He had to ride and hide him. I just hear somewhere laying in the, in the grass. Ivan... Ivan hasn't showed up yet. I'm trying to adjust this camera a little bit. There we go. Uh, I told you I was going to tell you some, a little bit about some of the responses I got from the bull story. And I've jotted some down, and, and I, I hope I didn't miss some. And uh, I'm not going to say a person's whole name. They may not want it said. Um... Uh, And I may not have them all written down, okay? I've, I've read all of them, and some of them are so interesting. I, I love reading these stories that you guys send. Uh, start off with, I'll talk about, uh, <laughs> a lady talk about barbed wire. I guess about me getting cut. Uh, barbed wire is dangerous, but it, it Barbed wire is almost a necessity unless you can afford like cow panels and stuff like that. But even then, animals will rub against it, you know, like scratch it. No net fence, they'll scratch it. If you don't have barbed wire at the top of it, they'll try to lean over it. Barbed wire, you know, just a little prone stick them and they'll, they'll back off of it. And uh, so it's kind of a necessity on, on a farm if you're going to try to separate cattle. Uh, she was talking about barbed wire, and, and I was thinking about something. You know, that's my first experience 
And you see these people going around these pegs in their nose and all kinds of stuff in their noses and ears and all that. That's, that's, that's them. It's okay. It's called body piercing. But barbed wire was my first experience with body piercing. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, Angie talking about a mama cow. They can be dangerous too. Getting between a mama cow and her calf if she almost got caught and it could have got hurt bad. Mama cows get real, not all of them, they get very protective, especially for the first few days of that little, that little calf. And so you have to be careful around a mama cow too, especially if they got a baby calf. Uh, there's, there's some wild stories out there about mama cows and stuff, you know, and, and trying to get people. And so you have to be real careful around mama cows. My brother lives in Washington State, my oldest brother. In fact, he's gonna come visit me in November. Uh, he's 86 and uh, 10 years old, actually almost 11 years older than I am, but he's not in the best of health and he wants to come down to Texas one more time. And his wife doesn't want him flying and stuff like that, but are coming, but She's afraid of the health issues and stuff, but he said he's got to come. He, he wants to come back to Texas and see this place one more time for sure. Yeah, hopefully that won't be the last time, but that's that's his words, his words. And I'm, I'm excited to see him. But he has a cattle there in Washington State, has, has a nice place out, almost on the Oregon border. Uh, not too far from Portland, I think. Uh, Oregon. But anyway, uh, the cow had a calf, gentle cow, and he walked down, he saw it, and I was sitting drinking his coffee one morning, she, he could see her down beside the corral fence down there, and she had this baby calf. Oh my goodness, she's got a calf. So he jumps up, heads down there to the corral, and she had never bothered him before. She's had calves many times. He walks up to check the calf, see if it's okay, what sex it is, or whatever, and she charged him. Just and she watched him coming. What like all of a sudden he slipped up on her. She watched him come down the hill. She charged him, hit him in the chest. It broke his sternum. I guess that's what you got. Broke his collarbone. Broke his shoulder blade. Uh, broke a couple of ribs. She hit him so hard it knocked him all the way across and hit. He hit the corral fence and she come after him and he had enough. Luckily, he wasn't knocked unconscious. He was able to pull himself underneath the corral fence so she couldn't get to him. She may have killed him in the hospital for quite a while. Uh, Angel tells a story about uh, she had a great uncle, a great uncle that got pinned up in a barn. And, and no one, up in the corner, the bull kept kind of at him, just at him, you know, hitting the wall trying to get him out of that corner. And for like two hours, the bull never would leave him. He just kept hitting that barn with him, him in that corner. And his son come home or whatever, came out and found it. And he couldn't get the bull out of there. He had to kill the bull to get to his dad. And his dad had mental issues. Even though it physically wasn't like hurt too bad, he had mental issues the rest of his life from that. It's sad. Uh, a lot, a lot of stories here I've read. I just, some of them I, I printed down. Uh, a story about a, I sometimes can't read my own writing. Maureen. Got chased out of a pasture by, by a bull trying to get her. And luckily she got to the fence in time to get out of there. Uh, and most of these stories are about Brahma bulls, but other bulls can hurt you too. Brahma bulls, I think, are high strung. I, I, that's my opinion. Just they're kind of high strung, and it doesn't take much to stir one up. And and they get stirred up over a lot of little things, you know. Uh, I love you, Johnny. Johnny sitting here with his head in my lap. He's full of cookies. Uh, Uh, in fact, her grandpa, I think, was saved by his dog. Brahma Bull got after him and would have caught him if it hadn't been for his dog. 
Uh, Kathleen told a story about her neighbor getting killed by his bull. And later they had a surveyor come out and surveyor got roughed up by, by a bull. And uh, that bull belonged to a co-worker. Uh, Christine talks about the bull getting after her and her, she, all the way to get escaped, she kept throwing dry cow patties, cow poop at him, <laughs> enough to get to the fence. Uh, Sarah Jane's dad had a bull, very laid back bull, very laid back, just never caused no problems until one day they was going to pin him and he went nuts, jumped five fences, went all over the place. Next day, there he is in the corral where they're trying to pin him to start with, all happy. Uh, Norma talks about they had a, a dairy bull that was allowed, allowed to touch. Let me tell you something. I had a dairy farmer who was a good friend of mine. Uh, we used to have a lot of dairy farms around here. And... There's none hardly, I don't think any left now in, in this particular area, but we had several. And as kids in 4-H, we first started out, we showed some pigs, but we'd also show, from the livestock shows, we'd go to these dairies and buy like a little Jersey calf and bring it home and raise it on a bottle or, or on my dad's old milk cow, and we would show them, my brother and I both. And uh, so I got to know a lot of these dairy farmers because we, we bought calves from different places. And there's one farmer that when I was working for the sheriff's department, about the only dairy left, I stopped by one day and he was going out of business. And we sat out in his yard talking about dairies and stuff. And I always thought I'd want a dairy, but that's a seven day a week job, two times a day, every day. A lot of work. And you never got any time off. But he's going out of business and he said, uh, it's sold most of their dairy cattle and he's going to buy some beef cattle and put on that on that that old farm on that farm they had. But he told me, he was talking about bulls. He said dairy bulls, he thought, and he'd raised them for many, many years. They're frustrated, he thought. They just frustration because they're usually kept separate from the cows. And even though they know a cow is coming in heat or in season, sometimes they're not allowed to breed that cow at that particular time because they don't want all their cows bred at one time and all given milk. And then when they all start drying up before the next calf crop, the milking barns are empty, no income. So they stagger them. So they got cows constantly having calves and some going out of the barn, some coming in. So they got a steady supply. So they have to use a calendar and stuff and kind of make sure they got the cows being bred at the right time. But these bulls don't understand that. They, un they don't understand it. They go, hey, that, that lady out there wants me to come out there, and they won't let me, and they get frustrated, they get mean. That was his his opinion, and I, I agree with him. Uh, Patricia talked about her grandpa had to sell his bull because he, he attacked him. He, he attacked him, and luckily it didn't hurt him, I guess. Uh, Gareth. Uh, his bull accidentally pinned, pinned him against a vehicle Broke his hip now, accidentally. Uh, he was feeding hay. And this bull got up, I guess, pushing on trying to get that hay and broke his hip. That's how strong they are. But get this. All the cows together around too, but the bull would not let the cows up there to hurt him. He, he couldn't get up off the ground. They would have stepped all over him and maybe killed him. The bull stood over him, and the cows couldn't step on him. Then when, <laughs> when it's all over, the bull licks him licks him like hey i'm sorry and they all walk off i thought that's pretty neat <laughs> deborah uh deborah's talking about going to the rodeo and going back where the rodeo bulls are and hey those bulls are mean folks she's a just a i guess a young girl and she's Gets up real close to bars looking at this bull, wanting to pet him or whatever, and he's staring at her, one of them stare downs, you know. And someone, a, a relative or a, a cowboy, somebody says, come back, get away from that pen. And just as she stepped back, that bull hit it hard as he could. She'd been up close, them horns could have come through and got her. 
It's bad. Uh, Diane. <laughs> this, this was funny, but it could have been serious. Diane. They had a bull. Her grandpa had a bull. Got his a hair on the end of his tail tangled up in, in barbed wire. Gentle bull. So him and her, her and her grandpa go out to get the bull out of the wire. He's cutting the tail, the, the hair and stuff, get it off the wire. Well, he just takes her and sets her up on top of the bull because the bull's so gentle. <laughs> when he freed the bull, the bull realized he was free and he patted him on the back, okay. The he bull just took off with Diane sitting up on top of it. I'm, I'm guessing she fell off, but she's okay. Uh, a lady from Maine, I don't, she didn't say her name. Uh, they had a dairy. And uh, I'm saying it's a lady. Uh, Maine Magic or something like that. But anyway, they had a Holstein bull. Could have been a boy. Uh, tore out of his enclosure. Tore up the milking parlor. Just tore all kinds of stuff up. He was just angry, mad. And when she or he, whatever it was, went into that barn, got after her. Tried to hurt her. And went up a... And they went up a, a ladder, went up into the silo. There's no way they escaped. And he tore up barn, all the pieces of the feed crate or cart there. They tore it up, slammed it against the walls. Uh, talked about he had huge horns and they'd cut them off a couple of times. They're so big. He couldn't get his head into the milk, or to the stanchions to eat. But it, eventually the dad and the grandpa come out and was able to pin him back up. Uh, Brenda said her dad's friend was crushed by a Brahma bull. Accidentally, still crushed. Uh, Chris talks about their big bull. Uh, wouldn't let you out of the stall. He would come in behind you and just stand there. You couldn't go out unless you brushed him. You had to brush him and spray him for flies or whatever. Uh, Mel, uh, she would bring the cattle in in the afternoons or I guess into the barns or whatever. They're, they had a big Angus bull and her dad told her, do not, do not trust that bull, never. You always watch out for that bull. Uh, then there's Jess. This is funny. They're from Ireland, okay? She had a boyfriend and they're walking and supposedly People in there in, in Ireland, if you're going to put a, a, a turn a bull out into your pasture, you got to notify your neighbors. So, uh, Johnny, I'm serious. I ain't going to tolerate it. Here, you got another cookie. There, now leave me alone. Oh, Johnny. Anyway, they're walking across this pasture. Nobody told them the bull was out. And here he comes, wide open. Her boyfriend takes off, and he's faster than she is. That ah, don't matter. <laughs> he left her behind for the bull. Luckily, she made it to the, to the fence in time to get across the fence. And she says that romance is over. That relationship stopped that that very day, right there at that fence. He left her behind. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, Raven talks about bulls in Louisiana for the longest. She's about used, to, I guess, back in Texas, like it was here. They would run free, run loose. There wasn't no stock law. The cattle just run everywhere. And uh, bulls out there would chase you. In fact, she had an uncle get killed by one out in the woods. Johnny, there's cookies right there. Stay away from my camera. All right, I got a couple more. Johnny, stop. Stop. He's dead as Ivy. Luckily, he ain't seen us here yet. Johnny, get your ears out of the camera. Please, I'm serious, Johnny. I'm serious. I'm trying to tell us talk about some of these things all right maureen 
They grew up having a big, Johnny, my goodness, big black Brahma bull. Wouldn't let nobody around him except for her. And she could go in the crowd and sit beside him and pet him, scratch his head. It didn't matter. Anybody else, especially a man, come close to that pen, he'd charge him. Uh, our uncle really got on to her about it. And then Tammy, I think it's the last one I wrote down. Tammy, and their, they had a, her husband had a bull named Bullet. And uh, Bullet charged him. And it, I, think, I think he was younger. He was young then. And he hit Bullet with a stick. Now, it must have been a big stick. But anyway, it kind of knocked Bullet out. <laughs> knocked him out. Not long enough for him to escape. That was just, and I love, and there, there ain't more detail than that. And I love these here stories that people tell, send me. I, I really do. I love them. And uh, I read them all. And I thought when I was reading them, you know, because I want to do a video about comments that we get. And uh, being we didn't have a whole lot to open today, I thought it would be a great time to do it. So Johnny and I, Sitting here in the shade, enjoying the shade. I got to get back up to the house. G's back. Her, she's got Carter now. And uh, Johnny, you're just a pitcher, son. You're just, you're just, you're just a pitcher. <laughs> a cartoon pitcher, maybe. All right, folks. I, I, I will tell you one more story that happened to me. We were out playing baseball. We were kids. And we had a big Brahma cow that belonged to my brother. And, and she had hated me and Cuz because we used to pick at her. It was our fault. When she was little, we'd pick at her. And when she got grown, she never forgot. And if she saw me or Cuz out in his pasture, she would leave the herd and come running fast as she could, wide open, head down. We're playing baseball out in the, the pasture. And I was on bats. So I was fixing a bat. And someone screamed, and I looked back, and she's like right on top of me. And all I did is swung around and hit, hit her across the nose of that bat. It, it didn't hurt her, but it stunned her long enough for me to get away. Now, I passed up first base, and now I even stopped looking. I was headed for that fence. <laughs> yeah, she could have got me. She would have probably killed me out there. All right, I, we'll talk some more about some of these things later on. I love you, Johnny. Me and Heidi... I didn't put Heidi sleep back here. I didn't put her sleep. We're fixing to head home. Catch you guys later. Y'all have a good weekend.